time to make my new cute soft ridges summer cotton hat. Ciao friends, Beth with Thimblehooks and today it's time to make my cotton summer soft ridges hat. This is a cute little bucket hat design that I made. It's used one, one of my favorite stitch combinations that I have found recently that I just love. So we're going to make this. I made one in a really obnoxious color and I have one in soft pink. And today I am going to use Mainstays 100% cotton from Walmart. So it's going to be lovely. Move these over just a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. You can make this hat with one skein of this, which is really cool. I love that because you can make a hat for $3 or $4. But this is Mainstays 100% cotton. This color is brownstone. It's kind of a gray, kind of a brown. It's more towards gray if you ask me. It's a 4 medium, it's 100% cotton, and they want me to use a 5 millimeter hook. But what you're going to need is a 4 a four and a half and a five. So your hooks are going to get a workout. We're going to start with the five and keep getting smaller. So go get out your five millimeter hook and we'll get started. And my five millimeter of choice today is my Divot Shilp Maple. It's so cute. I love this hook. So I'm going to set the other ones aside. I don't need them quite yet, but I will in a bit. And I thought this would also be the perfect opportunity to show everyone how to do a perfect circle. Right in here. Perfect circle. And what is a perfect circle? It's one that is round instead of a hexagon. The round is a little bit more preferable if you're doing something with small stitches, you're making a hat or a bag or things like that. So we're going to make this circle as the top of our hat right here. So you can see the difference. It's exact same stitches, exact same hook, exact same yarn. I got a circle here and a lumpy hexagon here. So no, 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 we don't want this. We want this. So I'm going to set those aside and I'm going to show you how to make this lovely circle. All right, let's start with our magic circle and my five millimeter hook. If you're not familiar with the magic circle, I do have a tutorial out there. It's only a couple minutes long because this is such an easy little thing to do. So you can take a peek at that real quick and come back and we will make our the crown of our hat in a nice circle. But here's my magic circle and I'm going to single crochet eight into my magic circle. And as always, of course, I'm going to mark my stitch mark my first stitch, especially when I'm working in the round and when I'm showing people how to do things, I think it's only it's only appropriate to do so. So there's my first one. We want eight. There's two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now we can tighten this up. Just pull. That's what makes it so magic. Pull. Perfect. Now we have eight stitches in our magic circle. That was round one. Look at that. You already get to make the click. Round one's already done. Round two is an increase. Two single crochets in every stitch. So we're going to increase from eight to sixteen. So there's my first stitch and I'm going to remove my marker as I always do. And two stitches, two single crochets in every stitch all the way around. All the way back to the stitch marker. And there's my last two stitches. Go into this final stitch for 15 and 16. There you go. That was round two. Round three isn't much more difficult than that. We're going to do a single crochet in the first stitch and move our stitch marker. And 
and then another increase. So it's a single crochet and then two single crochets in the next stitch. Single, two singles. That's our next round of increase for round three, all the way around. And there's my last two, a single crochet here, and two in the last stitch for an increase. And that was round three. We've just increased up to 24. So we're working right in here, just getting bigger and bigger, but this is going to stay a circle, not a hexagon. All right, round four is where I'm going to increase only by six instead of by eight. I switched it up a little bit because I like the way it lays a little bit better with only these three rounds instead of four with sixes. So what I'm going to do is these first three stitches in round four are single crochets and then we will do the increase. So it's three single so there's one and there's two and there's three single crochets and then two in that fourth stitch for the increase all the way around so one two three and then two for an increase one two whoopsie two three and two for the increase. All the way back to the marker. Here's my last four stitches in round four. We get one, two, three single crochets and our last stitch is the increase which will get two single crochets. Moving on, round five. Click. This is where we start to do something a little bit different. So normally we just do an increase of two and then single crochet four. Increase of two, single crochet four. What we're going to do here is we're going to do a half of one of those. So we're going to have two stitches on this side and two stitches on this side. So I'll show you what I mean. So the very first single crochet and we're on round five. Very first stitch is a single crochet. We're going to do one and two. Then we're going to do our increase. So there's two single crochets. And then we're going to go into the typical four single crochets in a row. One, two, three, four, and an increase, so there'd be two single crochets in the stitch. And that's again to the end to our last two stitches. So again, one, two, three, four, and one, two for our increase. One, two, three, four and two in the same stitch for an increase. One, two, three, four and an increase of two in the same stitch. One, whoopsie, one, two, three and four and then two in the stitch for our increase. And now we got to the end here we have two stitches left right here and right here. That's finishing out the four stitch sequence that we started with at the beginning where there were only two. This staggers our increases a lot so you can keep a round, a real circle instead of an octagon. I really like doing things this way. That's how I'm going to do almost all of my hats going forward and bags and things like that, I think, because it just makes it a 
a smoother circle. It doesn't have any ridges. It doesn't have any bumps along the edges. So our last two, single crochet. And what we just did there by splitting this one up two on this side and two on this side is going to happen on every increase that would be an even number. Like this one was four in between each increase. So hopefully this is making sense. I'll try to explain it one more time. We did, this is a typical round of an increase plus four single crochets, but we split one of them in half. So we did two single crochets at the very beginning and then increase four singles and increase four singles all the way around to the end. And the last two stitches were two single crochets to finish out this four, which will stagger our increases quite a bit and keep it round. All right, so we're going to move on to round six. Round six is back to the typical, what you've always probably done to make something into uh, a circle. We're going to start with the single crochets before we do the increase. And this one would be five because the previous round was four. So there's my first single crochet. We're going to do five in a row. Two, three, four, five, and an increase of two. And then five more single crochets in a row. One, two, three, And an increase of two, double, two single crochets in the next stitch. And then five singles in a row. And our last stitch is an increase, so it gets two single crochets. That was round six. We just increased up to 42. So that was round six. We're going to start round seven. Click, round seven. Now round seven has in between the increases is an even number because this last one was just five. The amount of single crochets in between each increase is an even number, so we're going to split it in half. So it would be six. So the very first stitch is a single crochet. I'm going to mark it again. And then two more. So there's three single crochets here at the beginning and there'll be three at the end. So we can stagger these increases. So now we do an increase. Remember we did one, two, three. So now there's an increase two here in this fourth stitch. Now we're back to our typical sequence, our normal sequence of six single crochets in a row. One, two, three, four, five, and six, and an increase. Two single crochets in that same stitch. One, two, three, four, five, six, and an increase. And we'll keep doing that till we get almost back to the stitch marker. and six, and an increase of two single crochets in that stitch. And there's our last three that match up with our first three. So the last three stitches are just single crochets. So again, that's going to stagger our increases quite a bit. So that was round seven, and we just increased up to 48. Where we're going is increasing up to 72. So we have to do this a few more times. So round eight, click, single crochet, the first seven, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
and then our increase of two single crochets in that same stitch. And that's the same sequence all the way around. Seven single crochets, three, four, and our final sequence of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and the last stitch gets two because it's an increase. One and two. And we just completed round eight. We've increased up to 54. Remember, we're going for 72, so we still have a couple left. All right, we're going to move on to round nine. We're trying to get to 72. So in round nine, we'll increase this up to 60. So we're on round nine now. And since that last round had a single crochets and an odd number in between the increases, this one is an even number, so we're going to split the first one, which would be four on this side, four on this side, and an increase, and eight, increase, eight, increase, eight, increase, eight, and then an increase, and four. So since this was an even number and the typical increase would be eight, we're going to single crochet the first four. And I move my stitch marker. So there's one, two, three, four, and then we get to do our increase. So there's two stitches, two single crochets in that stitch. Now we move on to the eight. Our typical for this round would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight and an increase of two single crochets in the next stitch. And now we should have four left over. One, two, three, four stitches at the very end that match up to complete the eight sequence with the first four that we did. So see, we just kind of moved it a little bit. We just moved our increases over a tiny smidge so they're not all lumped up on each other. So our last four stitches our single crochet. And we just did an increase up to 60 on round 9. We're going to round, move on to round 10. We want to get to 72. We just round up to, or we just increased up to 60, so now we're going to increase up to 66. This one is, the next number in the sequence is nine. So we'll do nine single crochets and then our increase. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and an increase of two single crochets in the next stitch. All the way around, sequence is nine singles in a row, and then an increase. And here's my last part in round 10. There's a single crochet in the next nine. One, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, and nine. We have one stitch left. Yay! That means we did it right, and that's our increase. So it gets two single crochets. And we just increased up to 66. And that was round 10. We have one more to go, and then we'll have our perfect circle for right here. And then we get to start working on the hat on the rest of the hat instead of just the top. So let's do round 11. So if you're catching my pattern here, or my sequence here, since the previous round in between our increases was nine single crochets, 
this one would be 10 single crochets and since it's an even number we're going to split it in half. We're going to do five single crochets at the beginning and the other five at the very end. So here's, there's my first one. So there's a single crochet. There's one, two, three, four, and five. So there's half of my normal typical sequence. So we're going to do our increase now in our sixth stitch here. There's two single crochets for our increase. And then we're going to do one, two, three, four, whoopsie, four, and there's number ten. Here's my increase two single crochets in that stitch and now I should have five stitches at the end. One, two, three, four, five. Five that still need to be worked to match up with the five that were at the beginning. Again, we're just staggering our increases. So there's one, two, three, four, It's a circle instead of a hexagon. We don't want a hexagon. We don't want this. It's all lumpy on the edges. We want a circle. So there's our perfect circle. And this one goes out to 72 stitches all the way around. If you wanted to make it bigger, you could keep right on going. Just keep with that same sequence. The odd numbers are all in one grouping in between their increases. The even numbers, the first one gets split in half. So the next round would be 11 single crochets and an increase all the way around. The round after that would be an even number, so it would be split. It would be 6 increase, 12 increase, 12 increase, 12 increase, 12 increase, and 6. So there you go. Now that we have our perfect circle, that's the top of our hat. We actually get to start working on the ridges part, which is super fun. This is one of my favorite stitches coming up. So for the next three rounds will be all the same. We're working right in here. And we are going to do a herringbone double crochet. So if you're not familiar, we're going to do one right here together. Yarn over through your first stitch, pull through, and then also pull through, pull under right there. Yarn over, pull through one, and then yarn over and pull through two. And we're going to mark that stitch. Let's do that again. All the way around. This is going to be the same stitch all the way around. All 72 of them will be a herringbone double crochet. So again, yarn over, go through, yarn over, and go under that first loop, yarn over, pull through the first loop, yarn over, pull through two. And this stitch is so cute because it ends up going at a little bit of an angle. We're going to do that all the way around. And that was actually starting round 12. I forgot my clicker. So all the way around back to our stitch marker, herringbone double crochets, all the way around. We need 72 of them. Here's my last couple stitches of herringbone double crochet for this round. Slip stitch through the first and through the second. And now we're back to my stitch marker. That was round 12. And whoopsie, for round 12, I should have I should have changed to my four and a half hook before I did this round, but it'll still be okay. This is a really stretchy stitch, so I like to move down to my four and a half when I start doing the ridges, but I won't hurt anybody. But normally, if when you start on this pattern, when you start round 12, move on to your four and a half. So this is my four and a half divot shilps. This one is teak and is gorgeous. Just gorgeous. Then I'm going to put my five millimeter away. This one I'm using a four and a half now. 
and we are going to continue with round 13 and 14. Both of those are herringbone double crochet. So I will meet you back after you do the additional two rounds. And here is the end of round 14. Right here. And one more herringbone double crochet. There we go. So round 14 is done. So round 12, 13, and 14 are all herringbone double crochets. Three rounds of that. And you can see them right here. You can see them right here. Boom, boom, boom. Right here. One, two, three. Now we get to make a ridge. All right, so round 15, click. This is how we get the ridge. Right, we just worked this stitch. This is our last stitch on this round. This is our first stitch in the next round, so we want to find its post. Right here is its post. We are going to do back post double crochets all the way around. But make sure you use the right post. You have to go over to the one. This has already been worked. The one that's to the right of my stitch marker has already been worked with the last herringbone double crochet that we did. So we want to go around this one right here. So you come from behind and go in front of the post. yarn over, pull through, and then complete a double crochet. And then we're going to move our stitch marker and mark that first stitch so we know where we started and we know where we're supposed to end. Again, this is round 15. They're all going to be back post double crochets. So here's our next post. Come in from behind and put our hook in front of the post. Pull through and a double crochet. There's our next post. Go in front of the post like that. Double crochet. In front of the post from behind, yarn over, pull through, and then complete a double crochet like normal. From behind, in front, double crochet. We're going to do that all the way around back to the stitch marker. And that will give us our little ridge. And it's so cute. There's our last couple stitches. My last back post double crochet. There's one more. Back post double crochet right here. And that ends round 15. So we just did this right here. This was my three rows or three rounds of herringbone double crochet and this is our back post. It makes this ridge poof out. We are going to repeat that alternating herringbone double crochet, back post double crochet, herringbone double crochet, back post double crochet. That was our first set. We're going to do that three more times. This will be another row of herringbone another row of back post, another row of herringbone, another row of back post, another row of herringbone, another row of back post. So round 12, 13, and 14 are herringbone double crochet. Row 15 was a back post. Row 16 is a herringbone. And then you're going to do 17 is a back post, 18 is a herringbone, 19 is a back post, 20 is a herringbone, and 21 is a back post, and I'll meet you right back in here. Right, here's my very last back post double crochet for round 21. See, now you can see we have four ridges. One, two, three, and this one. Four. Hey! Now we get to work on the brim of the hat which is way down here. It's nice and floppy and fun for the for the summer. So this is cotton so it breathes. Everything about this is nice. So we're going to start working on this because we just did our four ridges. One, two, three, four. Now we're going to start in here. 
Okay, starting at round 22, we're going to take our four and a half, put it away, and get out our four. Get out our four millimeter hook. And today's four millimeter hook of choice is my furls ebony. Isn't that just a beauty? I love this hook. So, your hooks are good to work out with this with this pattern. So now we're gonna take we're going down with a four millimeter hook so this tightens up these stitches a little bit so they're not overly floppy. You just want them to be floppy. Good floppy, not bad floppy. So we're gonna start working on round 22. So on our very first one here, we're gonna single crochet and move our stitch marker. So round 22 is the first 11 are single crochets. This was number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. Now we're going to increase our brim a bit over the next 50 stitches, we're going to increase those to 75. And the way that we're going to do that is by doing a single crochet in the first stitch, and an increase of with two single crochets in the next stitch, we're going to take them from 50 to 75. My little trick that I like to do is I'm going to take another stitch marker and go back here and count the opposite direction so I know where my last 11 stitches are. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So remember this was 72 all the way around, the first 11. And then we're going to do the increase on the ne over the next 50, so then that leaves 11. So when you get on a roll, you don't have to stop and count all the way up to 75. You know you're there. When you hit that other marker, then we change our stitch. And again, we're doing increases over the these center 50 of an or a single crochet, and then two in the next stitch, alternating back and forth, single crochet two single crochets, single crochet, two single crochets, until you get to the stitch marker. Right, we're almost to our, our other stitch marker, so there's a single and an increase. So the previous 50 stitches are now taken up to 75 by our every other stitch increase and now these last 11 are just single crochets. No more increases and I'm going to move this every row going forward we're going to be using that again. So there's one, two, ten, and eleven. So we just increased up to 97 stitches. The first 11 and the last 11 and then the 50 that were in between we increased up to 75. So we're at 97 stitches now in case you wanted to count them. So we'll move on to round 23. All right, Round 23, 24, and 25 are all exactly the same so that makes it easy. What we're going to do is single crochet 11. The first 11 just like we did in the previous row. There's one. I'm going to move this. Two. Three. 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. There's our first eleven, are just single crochets, and we're working right in here now. This row was an increase, now we're going to work right here. The next 75, which is all the way until you get to the stitch marker right here, just work all those stitches with a herringbone double crochet, all the way until that orange stitch marker comes along. So again, slip, yarn over through the first, yarn over through two, yarn over, slip, yarn over through pull through the first loop and pull through both. All the way to the next stitch marker. So there were 75 herringbone double crochets and now the last 11 stitches in round 23, those are single crochets. Just single crochets, just easy peasy single crochets. We do want to mark that stitch because we want it next time. Then you don't have to keep counting backwards or counting to 75. We just know that this is 11. So one, two, and 11. And we are back to our starting point. Back to our original stitch marker. And that was round 23. Now remember, round 24 and 25 are exactly the same as that. So we're going to go on, again it was 11 single crochets, 75 herringbone double crochets, and the last 11 stitches are single crochets times two more rows. So we just finished 23, we're going on to 24 and 25. And the last couple of herringbone double crochets for round 25. This will be my last one. And then the last 11 stitches for this whole round are single crochets. And I don't need this stitch marker anymore. One, two, ten, and the last 11 single crochets. Very nice. We don't need that stitch marker anymore. We just need this guy now. We only have two rows left, or two rounds left. Round 26 is really easy. Single crochets all the way around for everybody. 97 single crochets. So easy. Don't have to count anything. Wonderful. all the way around. And I do have to say, this mainstays 100% cotton yarn that is a Walmart house brand or exclusive. I really like it. It's very nice. It doesn't split. I haven't had a lot of issues with it. It got a little bit tangled on my center pole, but that happens to lots of yarns. But I really like it. It's very soft. It's fairly easy to work with. It doesn't split and fray and all those other things that you don't want to have happen. I say that because our all of our things, our hooks, my hooks, my yarn, my scissors, everything, we purchase. They are not gifted to us. We do not have any promotional affiliations with anyone. They do not send me big boxes of yarn outside of my house every day and I'm supposed to talk about how wonderful they are. I just give you my honest opinion because I bought it and it's mine, so I think I'm allowed to have my opinion. I am not being told by anybody that I have to like their product better than another one. And again, single crochet all the way around. We're almost done. This was round 26. Here's the last few stitches of round 26. And there's only 27 rounds in this whole hat. So that means we're almost done. 
Yay! Hooray! Round 27. Click. All right. This is our last round. And then we get to f finish off and wear our pretty hat. The way that I finish this off, you can see right here. Got my little zig my little zigzag going on right here. I just think that's the cutest little border for a hat. Especially with these fun little cotton summer hats. I just love it. I just, I just think it's cute. So what we do is a slip stitch and a chain one all the way around. That's all you need to make that cute little little zigzag. It's just adorable. So again, that was just slip stitch and a chain one. Slip stitch, chain one. Slip stitch and a chain one. All the way around. And I'll meet you back at the stitch marker. And here's our last few stitches. Slip stitch, chain one, slip stitch, chain one, and in our very first stitch from this round that's marked with the blue, we're going to do another slip stitch and we can fasten off. And a cool cotton summer whoopsie, our cottony summer soft ridges bucket hat is done. It's so cute. I'm not going to finish off. I'm just going to throw it right on my head. So all you have to do is finish off, weave in your ends, and you're ready to go. And see, I still have a little bit of yarn left. So one skein of our mainstays, 100% cotton, which is 180 yards makes a hat and I think this is only like three or four dollars so it's cute and it's economical it's a great price and it's fun and it's fast so thanks for stopping by thank you for supporting my small business please subscribe to Thimble Hooks and tell all your friends and then come back soon I have a lot of really fun stuff coming up shortly thanks bye <laughs>